Second down, Rivers. He's going to wind up and air it out. And they went for a big play through the air on second down. Couldn't connect. Now it's third. But it's not been the best game for him. But he definitely tried to get by with a little help from his friend there, trying to create a big play. Couldn't do it, fell incomplete. But you're right, hasn't been a banner game here in the second half, just trying to get going. The big thing is trying to keep confidence up and continue to fire. The Chargers on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third down and 12. Shotgun, it's Rivers. Gets it to Benjamin, it's caught. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. A really nice gain of 25 yards. back at the 27. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it, and, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. That loss of three, a rare stumble or team. They keep it on the ground again, Gordon. Oh, and now he bowls him over. He's able to get six, a nice pick up down to the 21. Well, with the fumble he had earlier, we, we know how key keeping the football is here. That fumble earlier probably at the forefront of his mind. Just hold on to this thing. It's also at the forefront of the mind before. They're doing everything possible to have him do it again. They need that turnover. The Chargers on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and seven. Zero. Operating from the gun. Rivers. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. Mario Addison in there to get him for a loss of nine. And that'll lead to fourth down. And this is going to miss left. I don't think it even got there either. It's no good either way. And this score will stay right where it is. So a bit of a weird kick there. That wasn't an overly long attempt, but that never had a chance. You almost wonder if he might have maybe got that one on the laces because it kind of knuckled on him a bit. And this one winds up in empty possession. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Complete to running. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. 23 yards on the play. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. Out of the gun, Newton. Over the middle, that's complete to McCaffrey. And he works it past the... Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. Newton now. Five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. Throwing is Newton. It's caught on the right side. It's Smith. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. 12 yards on back-to-back -back plays there, and that's another first down. 
I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. Finally, a first red zone opportunity for these guys. They've got a first and 10 at the 15. From the red zone now, Newton. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. A pretty good coverage there, and both of these defenses, they've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it, and in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? Second and ten, Newton again. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Only a yard there. Sniffed out well defensively, and it brings up third. I thought that wasn't a bad time to call the screen. I thought late game, down on the scoreboard, had to figure they were expecting a pass downfield. Yeah, so the edge rushers, they're coming. That could have hit big. You're right. Good recognition defensively to snuff that one out. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Newton throwing again. He dropped it. Couldn't hang on in the end zone. So no six points incomplete. Now he's been a busy man out of the backfield. They've looked his way quite a bit so far in this game. Nice job there defensively, though, adjusting, because a couple of his earlier catches, he was wide open. Not that time. You mentioned the key word, adjustment. A better cover man on him now in space. One score down, here we go. They're gonna go for it here on fourth down. Gotta try it here, he's back to throw. And he will take it across for a Panthers touchdown. Greg Olson from 13 yards out. And the Panthers have taken the lead here in the fourth. Extra point try, good by Gano. And the lead is now 10 to 7. Gano out to kick this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. And the Chargers coming out of the field now. And they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there. We've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? Here's Gordon. time for a break we'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this ball on the 30 they'll come up with a second and five Now a second down throw for Rivers. And incomplete. He has had a great game defensively. He's been east-west, north-south, everywhere. Yeah, and I love how you describe that because to be a great defender, you have to be able to move up and back, sideline to sideline, and he's been fantastic. Reminds me of a young Charles Davis when he was playing Madden. Absolutely. Oh, wow. I thought you were going on the field, but okay, I see you. They'll look to throw. And nearly intercepted there. That would have been ball game if he had clinched it and caught it. Instead, he one more chance here on fourth down. And no move to get the offense off the field. They're going on fourth 
and five. Here with 154 left as they call the timeout defensively. Rivers is going to stay out there. They're going to try for this thing on fourth down. Expected they're going for it to keep the drive alive. Got a man over the middle. It's Williams. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. Rivers now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. taken down but not before he gets into enemy territory and now before this first down play we're going to get a timeout here as he'll get a chance to talk it over after picking up the first down Couple of first downs on the drive already as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. Now they'll pitch it out. This is Gordon. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50 right at midfield. That'll set them back with a loss of three on the play. And it'll bring up a second and 13. up third down so he's unable to complete it there and just not the game that you would expect from him he's been off the mark really start to finish yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on is he a little bit dinged up here or is it just off just by a bit maybe he can get it back in this situation he'll need to third down conversion with a gain of 28 and now we won't see a play on first down we're going to get a timeout instead as the clock will stop with 33 seconds remaining Rivers now 10 of 17 throwing the ball he's got a first and 10 Back to throw. And caught right side, Green. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. As he'll stop it with 27 seconds showing on the clock. Keep 
Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. green and they'll bring him down at the 13 yard line only three yards on the catch it's third down the chargers on third down three for seven so far in this game they need just a yard here it's third and one rivers to throw and that is incomplete stopping the clock with five seconds to go Maybe some temptation here to try to go for the win, but I think you got to kick the field goal. I agree totally. When you look at the time left on the clock, that's not a spot where you take the gamble. Go ahead and kick the field goal here and take it from there. And his kick is right there. It's good. And they will tie this game here in the final seconds. I tell you, the life of a kicker. He has not been called on the entire game. He's over there by the net, but they send him out here in the fourth quarter and say, hey, go tie the game, will you? And guess what? He comes through. I just don't know how they do it. I really don't. These cats are a different breed from you and me. That's a pressure kick, but that one was never in doubt. And here in overtime, if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and it gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Chargers offense gets set. They head back onto the field. Set for their first drive here in overtime. And this is where the crowd can really become a factor. They've had to battle it all day, but I know what you're saying. In overtime, that gets doubled, doesn't it? At least, because now the crowd really wants to be involved and help their team, and that first drive can dictate the whole thing because they know if this team takes it downfield and scores a touchdown, it's game over. It's been loud in here so far. So Rivers will lead the Chargers up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Now Rivers going to give it off to Gordon. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Shaq Thompson on the tackle that time. Short gain there to start overtime. Almost a tester play, wasn't it? Wanted to see if the guys on defense were going to fit the gaps the correct way because we're in overtime. So it's not just physical tiredness out there, right? Mentally, are you still doing what you're supposed to do? And they were up to the task on that play. And certainly fatigue on both sides of the football. Another tote for Gordon. He's been busy this afternoon. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's going to bring up third and five. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game. But the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. And they need five yards on third down here to keep this opening drive of OT alive. throw in overtime for Rivers. He's got his man here. It's green. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. 63 yards receiving for him now. And that last catch, good enough for a first down. Yeah. 
They run it here with Gordon. And an alley to run. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. That good for 22 and a first down. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other backs in the league. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They go back to Gordon here on first down. And some room to maneuver. And he is in for the score. And it is absolute stunned silence here as they win it on the road in overtime. Now, partner, a great game that we got to see and making it extra special. Not only did I get four quarters with you in this one, I got some overtime, a little whipped cream on top. Look at you, trying to make this whole thing palatable. I just want you to pay for my meal later. Hey, you really just wanted four quarters <laughs> what you wanted, but how much fun was that? We had that type of a game where we got us to overtime, and then we get the dramatic ending to finish things off as well. What a game. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaughton. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. Till next time, we say so long from Charlotte. Coach, thanks. CA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Inner Harbor and M&T Bank Stadium here in Baltimore, Maryland. 
The two teams emerging from their respective tunnels a minute ago to the approval of this Baltimore crowd. They're all set as their Ravens will match up with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Two hard-hitting blue-collar franchises. One of the better rivalries going. The Ravens and Steelers are underway. And that drives coaches insane, doesn't it? When they see that happen, it just, it just doesn't feel right, does it? Plus, you're giving up yardage. They'll throw on first down with Roethlisberger. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses because when you can have that type of a gain in the middle of the defense, it hurts them in so many ways because most teams like to be strong down the middle. And if you can sting them there, that opened things up for you on the outside as well. But that's where he, their big tight end, is so good. That middle third, the seam routes, the in routes. Yeah, you're right. Probably see more of that. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage and fortitude to go in the middle as well. <laughs> but he's got it. First carry for James Conner. And that play will go nowhere. Losing yardage back near midfield at the 49. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Now Roethlisberger to throw on second down. He's going deep for Brown. And nearly an interception here on their opening drive. But instead, third down. What I loved about meeting with these coaches before the game is we didn't even have to ask any questions. They told us that they were going to be aggressive and push the ball downfield. They weren't successful on that play, but look for them to try it again later. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. These two. Roethlisberger will throw. Escaping the pressure right. He gets it to Brown. Complete. A gain of 32 that time. Looked like the defense put pretty good pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse. Still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Roethlisberger will hand to Connor. And he'll be stopped after a gain of only a couple down to the 15-yard line. Le'Veon Bell saga, that continues to drag on. But James Connor, he's showing he can handle the load. 19 carries, 111 yards last week against Cincy. And when I saw him in preseason, I knew he was back to being the James Connor we saw at his best in college at Pitt.
before he went through his illness with leukemia and beat that. So you know the determination. You know the athletic ability. Over 100 yards, two touchdowns, could have had a third touchdown, but the Steelers chose not to appeal or what would you say, review a call where it looked like he may have broken the plane. He's doing it running, he's doing it catching, and the team is rallying around him in a big way. Second down, here's Roethlisberger. On the left side, it's McDonald. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. That catch good for 5. It's third down. And partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal. Because everything was right. Got the completion. But he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. This is Bell. And he's able to pick up the first before he's brought down inside the five at the four. The gain of five that time gives him the conversion and makes it first and goal. Now Bell, and he goes backwards on this one, losing yardage to the seven. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. Now from the seven, here's second and goal. Now Roethlisberger, and he's going to be dropped back at the 15-yard line. Second goal, last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack, but he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football, had to eat it, and ended up on the ground. So the sack, and now a third and long situation for the Steelers and Ben Roethlisberger. sacked twice now and they've got to figure out how to plug that leak a little bit right keep them away from the quarterback because when he's not being hit as you mentioned they're moving the ball well uh, this has neither the distance nor the accuracy it's no good and this will remain a scoreless game that opening drive looked good for a moment there but they'll wind up being turned away thanks to the missed field goal it does especially hurt when you come into a game on the road. You're trying to get things to go your way early, and now you suffer a setback right out of the gate. Now Flacco and the Raven offense come up first and 10 at their own 37. Flacco from the gun. Underneath down, and he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. It's a four-yard pickup, and that'll make this a second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Second quarter now. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis with you. It's the Ravens who have the football. They've got it second and six to start things out.
to pass. Flacco. Allen here on the screen. A huge play there on the screen pass. 48 yards. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. They'll run it here. This is Buck Allen. And this play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back to the 15. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Second down. And it's caught. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Nick Boyle, a 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Ravens are in for six. Tucker with the extra point. And that makes the score 7-0. Here's Tucker now out to kick this one away. Here comes Ryan Switzer to return it. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple of extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Pittsburgh taking back over here in a second on offense. And the Steelers back on the beam after their second straight win, third in the last four game, defeating division rival Cincy this past week in Charles 28-21. Yeah, and that's the seventh straight win over Cincinnati, including the postseason. And we all remember that last postseason meeting where it looked like Cincinnati had them beat mm. and it got away from them. Some teams just have other teams' numbers. And right now, that's what Pittsburgh has going against Cincinnati. But the open week next week could not have come at a better time for Pittsburgh. They're hot, but they'll get a chance to get some rest. And then their next two games in the division. Cleveland has played better this year despite their loss this past week against uh, the L.A. Chargers. And then Baltimore, who's shutting everyone down on defense, especially in the second half. And he fires one that's intercepted. Cyrus Jones picks it. And they are going to set up shop at the 40-yard line. Well, they didn't exactly show patience there, did they? Just down the score, they come out firing right away and compound things by throwing an interception. They put their defense in a really tough spot. They get the pick. Now what can Flacco do on first down? Eight. And this is caught inside the five. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. John Brown, 40 yards. And the Ravens will extend their lead. Tucker now to add the point after. Tucker able to connect on the extra point. And that'll make the score 14 to zip. Here's Tucker now out to kick this one away. The Steelers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early. Probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything. At least three points get that zero off the board. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Trying for Brown, and 
it's intercepted. Picked off at the 39. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They go play action here on first down. Blitz coming and down he goes. Bud Dupree coming hard on the blitz. He dumps him for a loss of eight. But that's what they have to do more of defensively. Not just getting sacks, but they have to keep getting in his face. Not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been carving them up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Flacco. And that one goes incomplete. He's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it. The turnover put him in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else you do? You make your defense mad. Yeah. They got you the football, gave you a great opportunity. You got to cash in and get some points. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Set, From the gun, Flacco. And he's going to go down. Back near midfield at the 49. T.J. Watt coming in to drop him for a loss of eight, and it'll be fourth down. Play, it's a high.